Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today and welcome. My name is Simone, I'll be hosting the session today and I'm delighted to be here with Franz and Jose who will be talking to us about the updates on the Oxford API, the version v2.3. And now, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Franz so he can properly introduce himself and begin. Franz, over to you. Thank you, Simone, and I hope that everyone can hear me. Um, hello, I'm Franz Vitulli. I'm a product manager at the Oxford Languages Division in the Oxford University Press. Um, my, the, the products that I manage are mainly the Oxford API, that, that is going to be the, um, the focus of this presentation, of course, and my and the presentation from Jose, we, we, which is the, the, the speaker that is going to talk after me. Um, but I also manage a number of other products, the Oxford English Word List and uh, mainly the Oxford data sets that are derived from our existing intellectual property that, that is the, um, the dictionaries that, that we have published over the last few, I would say, decades. So, dictionaries, of course, have been a huge part of our um, of our business model over the decades. Again, um, I'm sure that pretty much every one of you attendees have one of these or more of these big books in your bookshelves. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you are still using them. Um, the, the the usual experience of dictionaries as books or as data has changed so much over the, the past few years, I would say over the past like 10 years. Um, people still want to know what words mean, of course, still want to know um, what words uh, mean in different languages, but that doesn't mean that uh, they want to leave the environment where they are, uh, when they are, for example, reading something or when they are, um, using um, a, a gadget or a piece of hardware or software um, which is why uh, over the last few years we recognized how yes uh, dictionaries as books can be things of the past but the content of the dictionaries can still be very much valuable uh, there are so many use cases that can be um, implemented uh, when it comes to 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 dictionary and and more widely, I would say, uh, lexical data, um, not just for dictionary lookup uh, to understand, for example, a definition or a um, or a translation of a word in another language, but also, for example, for training data or for powering word games. There are so many use cases that we can uh, that can be powered by uh, lexical data, and therefore we can say that over time the dictionary data, the dictionaries from books sort of became digital assets that everyone, uh, engineers, developers, um, collective of um, people who build things online can use to power their own products. Um, you, you can see, for example, uh, when you uh, ask Google to define a word, you get the definition, for example, in this case, on, on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see chair. The, word, the definition of chair comes with some images and comes with a definition, in this case, lexical data, like noun, um, which is the part of speech, and then a separate seat for one person, typically with a back and four legs. Um, and this definition, in, in the case of Google, for example, came from comes from our dictionaries, from 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 Oxford. But also on the right hand side, you can see um, the Apple uh, iOS um, operating system, uh, where you can manage dictionaries and you can gather dictionary data that you can use directly from uh, places like Spotify, uh, sorry, a Spotlight or um, Safari or, or all the, the, the various websites um, within both iOS and Mac OS. So essentially these are all new uses that people can, 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 can do with dictionary data. Um, in this presentation we are going to talk about the API, the Oxford API, uh, as a data set delivery solution, which means that we can deliver the data sets from Oxford uh, in different ways, in different formats, and with utilizing different delivery mechanisms. 
we have, for example, the possibility to deliver a complete data set in bulk. So, I don't know, um, the client pays for, uh, the, you know, a preset amount of money, and we send the data. But also, of course, we can deliver data set as they are requested by API. And the the Oxford API, I mean, API is delivery mechanism for data set, are really a great way to democratize the, uh, the utilization of Oxford data to all uh, business levels of developers. So you can, for example, um, access Oxford data um, when you're using products from Amazon or for big tech, uh, but you can also access Oxford data uh, from uh, small um, word games developed by independent developers. And uh, the API is a very smart and uh, easy way to access those data, to power your solutions, your products with, the, with this data, and to make sure that your uh, applications that need lexical data are powered by trusted and authoritative lexical data that come from us. So uh, before we get deeper into the Oxford API, I wanted to just quickly recap what an API is and why it's so clever as a delivery mechanism. So an API um, in, in very like um, jargon free kind of um, uh, you know um, definition we can say is a technology that allows different softwares, databases, different uh, applications to talk to each other, to share data. Uh, in the case, for example, of this diagram that you're seeing here, a client app might send a request to a database and the database sends a response to the client app. So um, in the case of a database, for example, it can be really anything, not just Oxford data, but can be like Twitter has an API, Slack has an API, Facebook has API. So uh, every um, database, every um, uh, every application or every product that has data that can be shared with another um, with another application. It can be like your personal website displaying your latest tweets, for example. So it's it's a really easy way to for a developer to implement data from an external source. And this is pretty much how the Oxford uh, API works. So you can see on the left, a uh, pretty standard use case for our API, uh, just an ebook reader. Um, it can be a Kindle, it can be a new, it can be literally, it can be your application online with your ebooks. Um, as someone is reading the, an ebook on an application powered by our API, um, if they want to know what that word means in a specific language, or if they want to know the definition of that word in the case of a monolingual data, they can send a request to Oxford Languages. Uh, which sends a response with the data that has been uh, requested. So it's pretty smart and um, yeah, and, and empowers like expands the possibilities of a uh, of a product or a gadget on an application. The Oxford API, as uh, things stand at the moment, has several data sets. Um, Three of them have been just implemented with the latest release, the release 2.3 of our API. Um, and uh, yeah, as you can see on the screen, monolingual data sets are two variants of English. We have British English and uh, US English, the uh, New Oxford American Dictionary. Um, but all, we also have Hindi, Latvian, Romanian, Spanish, Swahili, Tamil, and Gujarati. Uh, we also have uh, several bilinguals, I'm not going to read them all, but um, we have, for example, implemented recently Russian, the Oxford Russian Dictionary. I think, if I remember correctly, it was the very first Oxford bilingual dictionary um, published, I think, in the 70s. So, uh, and, and of course, update, keep, we kept it updated and, and, until now, so it has m many uh, words that, had, that, that weren't really there on the 70s, but yeah. Um, we also added the Arabic, we added the Marathi dictionary. So these are, some of the, these dictionaries, we developed them, some of other dictionaries um, are from uh, partners, uh, like publisher that are part, that are, that have partnered with us. Uh, we have also other 
data sets that have been developed by us but in in house at oxford languages as part of a program called ogl oxford global languages uh, which is a program um, whose goal is to bring online uh, many, many languages other than English with a focus on uh, underrepresented languages on um, online especially. Uh, so you can see, for example, languages like Hindi or like Marathi talked by, as like by millions and millions of native speakers, but with a very low representation in terms of online resources. And we also have other data. We have uh, thesauri. Uh, we have an, an, an English thesaurus. We're expanding. We have in the in our roadmap uh, other thesauri because it's a, a fairly highly requested feature. Um, we want to expand, for example, with the US thesaurus uh, and start implementing new languages as we uh, move forward. We also have a sentence dictionary, which is particularly useful um, for people want, wanting to create like data sets of parallel sentences and uh, um, English lexical statistics. We have uh, one of our one of our corpora that we use to monitor how language change um, and we can gather lexical statistics from from that corpus moving forward uh, the features that we have so these are the endpoints that we have uh, one of them is red because it's the new one it's the uh, latest one that we had did uh, the inflection endpoint i think that uh, the next speaker jose is going to um, do a deep dive into the the, the inflection endpoint and how it works but i'm just going to uh, summarize our endpoints so uh, entries lemmas words inflections itself uh, they're all endpoints that power our monolingual lexical data so essentially with entries and point you can gather um, you can retrieve definitions pronunciation example sentences for all the um, dictionary head words with lemmas for example you can check if a word exists or you can connect it to the dictionary head word and the word some point which is one of the uh, newest addition to our uh, feature pool um, is essentially an endpoint that looks into lemmas and gives you entries results so in a nutshell gives you definitions pronunciation sentences for all the words that are valid in a language not just for dictionary head words which is why the i would say that the oxford API is not a dictionary API anymore, it's a proper languages API because it gives you data for words from the whole language, not just for um, dictionary head words. So for example, in the word endpoint, you can search the definition of a word like runs, third person of the verb to run. In a dictionary, you wouldn't find that word, but on the Oxford API, you would. And we also have a dedicated endpoint for thesaurus which retrieves of course uh, words that are similar or opposite in meaning um, a search endpoint that finds possible meanings or possible translation for a given word um, and also various uh, utilities so we have uh, we can retrieve lists of domains fields filters all features that you can uh, investigate to create your products and to make sure that you can filter or include or exclude some of the um, the various categories and filters and grammatical features that we offer. So just to summarize some of the existing use cases, um, many of you uh, could possibly already be uh, Oxford Dictionaries uh, API users, but many of you may be just curious about it and want to get started with it. Uh, so these are just some of the use cases that we have identified over, over time. Um, there are some very simple, um, we call them front-end uh, use cases, such as the definition definition display, very common. Uh, so for example, if you are a um, developer for a uh, e-reader or like um, a learning management platform and you want to display definitions or translation for words uh, this is something that the Oxford API can power very easily and very effectively um, but we also have what we call back-end applications uh, which basically means when the API data power 
the engine behind your app. So for example, in the case of um, word games, you may want to use uh, the lemma endpoint, for example, or the inflections endpoint to um, make sure that the word that has been played exists, so you can validate words. Um, we also offer other products in, the, in, 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 in this um, for this particular use case, uh, but you can you might want to build like chatbots uh, for Slack, for Telegram, for Discord, for Mattermost. Uh, we've seen so many um, use cases in this in this particular uh, department. But also you can power um, data labeling or NLP research. Uh, we also, as we also deliver uh, audio files for pronunciation, uh, we've seen uh, an increase in using the API to give reference to voice actors for audiobooks or for um, any 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 profession where it's important to know how a word is pronounced, uh, you can do it uh, via YouTube, of course. But you can build a product and use the API data from Oxford to power your um, yeah your product with with the sound bank with the sounds that come from the API. So uh, very quickly, what does the future for the API look like? Of course, more data sets. As you can see, the list of uh, languages that we have, um, it's, you know, quite, um, quite, you know, uh, full of languages. Uh, but for example, at, internally at the Oxford University Press, we have many more uh, data sets, both for languages and for domains. So legal, business, um, health words. Um, that can be used to, to 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 power platforms and products and uh, and applications. Uh, and of course, we want to know from our users whether those are data sets that might be useful to you to to to, to power your applications. So more data sets again, uh, domain specific uh, data sets for learning languages, but also more, just more languages and generalist dictionaries in other languages more endpoints, um, same as before. Um, we know that as a lexical API, we're offering already a few, uh, a few endpoints that are already uh, powering many of your applications. But those are not the only endpoints that we can deliver. There's so much more and we really want to hear from you uh, in terms of what we can build after 2.3. Uh, again, the last two um, the last two releases had the words endpoint and the inflections endpoint, two great endpoints that are very very useful. We, we can add more, and we want to hear from you what you need to power your product. And also, of course, uh, we want to improve our endpoint output. So, for example, we received feedback regarding our translation endpoint recently, and we and we have added more features to it. And also, of course, better onboarding, a better development, developer experience. We want the API to be a nice hub for developers. Developers can come and uh, um, feel at home um, using the, the, the JSON data we, that we deliver. That we can, uh, that they can, you know, use in their in their applications, so that they can just power the products and make sure that they can, they can count on us. They can count on our quality, not just for data, for which we're already well known on the market but also you know for the overall developer experience so if you haven't got started now uh we have three plans at the moment um prototype just for um monolingual data with entries and lemma endpoint uh and it's free so you can just get started with the uh with testing the api and testing the data and see if the code that we prepared for you works well within your application. We also have a developer plan um, with, a, um, with a tiered discount system, which means that you, uh, as you enter your credit card, you just get billed for what you use in terms of calls. So it's a paper call system. And then we also have an enterprise uh, pricing plan, which is uh, great for all of you who work in more established businesses and want to be able to, um, for example, budget for a year and uh, and we want to more to have more like a fixed price for your um, uh, for your the, um, API account. Uh, we have a exhaustive documentation on all our endpoints, so you can go to developer.oxidictionaries.com for a slash documentation and start uh, looking into the, the various endpoints, how the URL is structured and how to use the different endpoints for different use cases.
And also, uh, finally, the statistics page. This is um, a bit of, a, of an unknown benefit that we give to our users. Uh, once you log in with your um, with your login credential on the API website, you can monitor, especially for like non-technical stakeholders that want to see how um, the API is used on their side. So how many languages are used, uh, how many endpoints are used, especially for those who have like multiple languages and multiple uh, features set up on their products. So yeah, to recap, sign up at developer.oxydictionaries.com, uh, read the documentation on uh, uh, the domain for slash documentation. You can access statistics. Uh, we have a forum for support, so every time you want to uh, ask a question, you can either get at, get in touch with us or access the support, uh, the support forum, so that other people maybe solve that problem before you. And you can follow us on Twitter as well to stay updated with all the things related to our API. The handle is at Oxford Words API. Again, my name is Franz Vitulli. I'm the product manager for the Oxford API. Um, I'm always available to chat with users, so you can get in touch with me uh, via email, franz.vitulli at oup.com, or on Twitter at Franz Vitulli. I'm always happy to answer all your questions. Thank you. Back to you, Simone. Thank you very much, Franz. That was very interesting. Um, now I'm going to pass it over to Jose. Right. So. Well, my name is uh, Jose and I am a language technologist lead here in Oxford University Press and I have been working on designing the API and implementing um, new features for this API for over three years. Um, and well, I am going to talk about uh, the technical part of, of, the, of, this, of this webinar. So in the agenda today, what we are going to see is uh, first um, an introduction, a very brief introduction about the API, what is new in version 2.3, the inflection endpoint and the, the words endpoint that, uh, that uh, Franz mentioned earlier. Um, so first, um, a very brief introduction. So uh, as uh, uh, Franz mentioned, uh, this API, um, well, we, we are assuming a bit of uh, well, a, a familiarity with the API in this presentation, and and well, um, and for those that doesn't know what is an API, an API, API means application program interface. So uh, it is basically uh, it makes a, a, it makes possible the interaction the interaction between machines machine to machine and this API is uh, it is empowering uh, and making possible the interaction for any application uh, with this uh, API. It is a RESTful API so it is using HTTP protocol and the format of the responses in JSON. The first version was delivered um, and was launched by Oxford University Press in September 2016 as the uh, the OGL program. And version two was launched in April 2015. Um, it supports 31 different languages and it gives you access to more than 63 different data set, data sets, um, including monolingual, bilingual, thesaurus sentences extracted from the corpus and um, inflections and all that different data sets and it has more than 10 endpoints. Um, so what is new in version 2.3? Uh, so as uh, Franz already mentioned um, we launched three new data sets Oxford Arabic Dictionary, English Marathi, um, Oxford Russian. Uh, the three of them are bidirectional, so they are um, English, Arabic, English, Russian, English, Marathi, and also Arabic, English, Marathi, English, and Russian, English. And uh, we also improve the response of uh, the translations endpoint, adding more features and data features like synonyms, inflections, um, we now show more phrasal verbs, um, 
compounds and different derivatives. Um, we also launched the new inflection endpoint that I'm going to talk now. So first of all, what is an inflection? Uh, well, the Oxford English Dictionary defined an inflection as a change in the form of a word, typically the ending to express a grammatical function or attribute such as tense, mood, person, number, case or gender. So if we have the word was, uh, the past tense of the of the verb be, was is an inflection of be. And uh, the same applies to, for example, cats is the plural of cat um, as a noun. And uh, in other language, for example, Spanish, gata, which means cat, is the feminine uh, of uh, gato. And well, that is basically an inflection. And this inflection endpoint, what is, uh, what you will be able to retrieve from, to retrieve from it is uh, all, it will list you all the inflections, regular and irregular inflections for a specific word. Um, this list will include inflections that could be related to a sense or subsense of, um, of uh, a word, uh, of an entry, but you will not be able to get that information from this endpoint. To do that, you will have to go to the entries or uh, the, the translation endpoints if you want to see uh, the, the, the inflection at which sense applies. Um, but well, the results are all grouped by lexical entry, homograph number and lexical category. Um, um, so a lexical entry is the high level container of all the information relating to a single distinct um, lexical item. Um, so, and if you have two lexical items that are written using exactly the same string of character, um, then uh, you, those two lexical items are known as homographs. So for example, if we have the the word bank, these have uh, two lexical items that are related to finance or um, to the land alongside a river. So you have two different uh, two, two different concepts for the same representation or word um, that is bank. And um, so. The lexical entries, all or entries, uh, well, not all of them, but when is relevant, half, uh, all of them have a um, homograph number that helps you to distinguish between them, between different homographs. Um, so this is uh, this is implemented in this endpoint as well. Um, so some data features that you can find that you will find in this endpoint. So as we already mentioned, um, the results are grouped by lexical entry and every lexical entry will have uh, a list of inflections and every inflection is defined by an inflected form that is uh, the, the written, how that inflection is written, grammatical features that will give you information about uh, uh, grammatical information uh, basically, um, like tense, gender, number, all that information. Then pronunciation, pronunciations like what, how that um, inflection is pronounced. Registers that will tell you if that inflection is offensive or is informal. Regions that will tell you if that word is um, is used in a specific region, like American English um, or British English. Um, and then domains, if that inflection is related to a specific domain, like sports, music, or uh, that sort of thing. Um, so to access this data, uh, you need to use uh, HTTP request using a GET method uh, to this URL. So uh, you will see, well, you need to specify that is the inflections endpoint, then um, the language is a monolingual um, endpoint. Um, you need to specify the region uh, 
Uh, so if you want to get the inflections, the inflections of a word in British English or American English, it, it will, if you specify, if you don't specify any region, the endpoint will redirect you to the English, the British English by, by default. And you need to specify a word ID, um, <laughs> which is basically the, the entry, the word entry, and um, it supports um, a strict match. So in case that you want the API to be case sensitive or use uh, diacritics or distinguish between diacritics, work with diacritics and without, um, uh, you, you need to set this parameter to true. Uh, an example would be if you want to get the inflections of uh, of March, of the verb March, uh, which is not uppercase, uh, to distinguish to to distinguish with uh, March the month, basically. And this endpoint support seven, seven different languages, and as I mentioned earlier, um, is a monolingual endpoint. So. Let's uh, do a demo, and for that I'm going to use um, this um, the uh, uh, Jupyter uh, notebook. Uh, so, sorry, is this one? There we go. So, first of all, I would like to talk about the lemmas endpoint, which is um, which is the opposite to the to the to the inflections endpoint. Um, so the lemma endpoint um, it takes an inflected form and it gives you the root form of that um, of that word. So um, let's have a look in this example in which uh, we have uh, given golden. Um, we request the root form to the lemma endpoint and then the API retrieve the, the root form gets. Uh, you need to specify an app ID and an app key um, and, um, and then you, you will send the request to the lemma endpoint. Lemmas is, is not localized so you, you cannot specify if you want lemmas for uh, British or um, American English, you just specify the language with, without region in just English and you need to specify the inflected form that you want. So if we do this then yeah we will see here that golden is past participle of the inflection get. Um, then the inflection standpoint it works um, in the other way around so uh, given a uh, English word and infinitive uh, a fruit form um, it will give you it will return all when you do a request you will then the API will return all the inflections of that word so in this case we uh, in this example we we need to send the request to the inflection endpoint specify the language um, in contrast with um, the, um, the lemma endpoint, uh, inflection is localized, so you need to specify the region and then you specify the word ID uh, of the entry. So when we do this, then yeah, we will see here all the inflections of this word, um, including some grammatical features. And as I mentioned before, it will tell you when uh, inflection is used in a particular region or um, is registered as um, offensive or in this case archive. Um, then uh, we can see some more data features uh, uh, if we use like a more complex uh, word as uh, the verb be or English and then you can see that we also provide uh, audio files Um, then, well, it supports different languages, uh, so it, you can retrieve words uh, from Spanish, for example, or for any other language that the endpoint supports. And in this case, you need to specify the language. Again, it's a request to this endpoint, the inflection 
inflections endpoint and you need to specify the language and give the word ID. I, I wanted this example to be uh, to be to return or retrieve to, to make the API um, case sensitive and use diacritic in my uh, in my word ID. So I set match a strict match to true. So when I do this when I do this request and I make this request, I only will get results that uh, contains that has the ID with diacritic, as you can see here. So yeah. So well, this is all for the inflection endpoint, and now we are going to see what is the words endpoint. So the words endpoint um, is able to to retrieve any data. Uh, uh, sorry, data for any word in the language. It could be an inflection, it could be an entry of the dictionary, uh, it could be a root form, so in, an infinitive, so yeah. Um, and obviously, well, the only restriction is uh, that the, the word needs to be um, in the data set, that word needs to be in the data set. So before, before we had the um, the words endpoint, if you want to get a definition of a word, you have to uh, first get the, the root form from, from Lemma. So let's say you have the word was and you want to get the definition of that word. Uh, first, you need to get the root form of that word. In this case, you, so you have to send a request to Lemmas and Lemmas will tell you that is the, the verb B and then you can get the definitions. Um, in contrast, the uh, word endpoint, you just need two, one, one, um, one request to get the, the definition. So, uh, in this case, we will send a request to the word endpoint um, for the word was, and the, the, the endpoint will give you all the definitions for, for that word. Um, so, to get, to, to do, um, a request to this endpoint, uh, you need to specify obviously that you want to do a request to this endpoint to the words endpoint. Um, so you have to, to uh, you have to say that, and then it's a monolingual language. Um, it just accepts um, get uh, request. Um, the uh, the language the, the the language that you specify needs to be localized, so you need to specify the region if you want it to be um, British English um, or American English, and you and you need to set a query parameter uh, to get the to set the, the word form. It supports uh, projections of uh, fields, so if you want to filter out some of the properties of the response, for example, you don't want um, you just want uh, definitions and examples you can specify to this endpoint to just get those properties and you can filter uh, the output by um, by lexical category so if you just want to get uh, nouns or and also the same for the grammatical features and the the response use the the entries endpoint schema so it, you will get the same data in the entry endpoint. Uh, yeah. So it supports eight different languages, um, and as I already mentioned, is is monolingual. So if we, so let's go now to do a demo of this. Um, so there we go. Yeah. So the words endpoint. Um, First, I would like to give you an example of the use of lemmas and entries. So given an inflection or an inflected form lives, um, I want to get the definitions of that word. And to do that first, I need to get the root form uh, of this inflection in the lemmas endpoint. And then the lemmas endpoint will, test, will tell me that um, this uh, inflection has two root, two root forms or two lemmas live and leave. Uh, so um, we, we need to specify again the um, app ID and the app key that is 
that you, you will get them when you register in the in the website um, and then, then you need to send a request to the lemma endpoint say, specifying the language of the word and the inflection so if we do this then yeah we will see that that lives is an inflection of live and live and the verb right so now that we have the root form we need to get the, the actual definition then we need to send another request to the entry send point and specify the region that we want uh, english uh, British English in this case, and the, the root form that we got from the lemma send point. So if we send this request, uh, yeah, we, we will get all the definitions and entry data. In the case that we want to know all the definitions for all the possible, um, uh, all the possible um, uh, lemmas of the word lifts of, of the in this inflection in this case it has two root forms so we need to we will need to perform another um, request to the entry send point uh, to get the the definition of the other word of, of the other um, possible root form uh, so yeah again the same we will see here the the data for uh, this Word ID. And in contrast um, with the word endpoint, uh, we given an inflection lives uh, when we request that uh, that inflected form from the words endpoint, the API will retrieve directly all the definitions. So um, in this case, you need to send the request to the words font, to the words endpoint, and then uh, specify the language with the region, uh, set the, the, the query parameter to use lifts. And then, well, in this case, we are filtering out the output because we just want to get um, the definitions. Again, you need to set the, the, in the headers, you need to set the app ID and the app key. Um, um, yeah, so let's send this request. And um, yeah, you can see here that directly we are getting the definitions uh, of leave, leave, and the other one for leave. So you just need one request to get all the definitions of uh, an inflected form. Um, yeah, well, this is another example in which we just want to get uh, the the, um, the we just want to get the, the definition. Well, in this case, just the examples. Um, of a word, um, and we just want the the lexical. We just want the nouns, the definition for the for the noun. So if we do this, yeah, then we will get all the examples of that inflected form. Um, yeah. So right. So back to the presentation. I think that is all. So yeah, if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Jose. It was very interesting Good to see what's new on the API. Let's get started with the questions then. We've got quite a few that are coming in. So the first mm -hmm. question that we have here is, I suppose it's to you, Jose. Does the words mm -hmm. endpoint work with phrases? Right, so uh, yeah, let's, I have prepared here some examples. So let's say, uh, so. The words endpoint support multiple words, so you can send, um, you, you can set the query parameter to retrieve, um, like an entry with multiple words. But it doesn't support um, get the entries for more than for, get the definitions for more than one entry. For example, let's let's send a request to the. Um, uh, uh, words endpoint in which we we want uh, to get the definitions of gay bake, uh, baked potatoes for example as you can see this is um, 
this entry has multiple words and it's an inflection. So if we send this request, yeah, we are going to get the definition of baked potato. But it doesn't support uh, multiple entries like baked potato and cat, for example. This this would fail. It doesn't. This this um, is not an entry. So it doesn't. It support uh, to look up for uh, entries with multiple words, but it doesn't support like more than one. Get the 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 definition of more than one entry of the dictionary. If that is clear, yeah. Thank you, Jose. We had another question that is very similar, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Someone was asking, how well does the lemmas endpoint work with multi-word expressions? Yeah, well, the same. Um, so let's see an example. Well, here I had a, an example prepared. So let's comment out this. Um, here, uh, well, in this case, this is not going to work because we don't have the, um, the inflection of running out of the phrasal verb. So if I, if I try this, yeah, it, it will not find. But if we try uh, run out, it will tell you that it's a verb. Um, it is in the data, it's, it is in the, in the database. It, it is in the, um, in the data set. Um, so again, if that entry if that's um, if multiple words, if that's a specific uh, lookup or that query that has multiple words, it is in the in the data sets, the API will give you the result. Another option to do that is to use the search endpoint. So if we use the search endpoint, um, in GB, say, okay, I want um, to know I, I would like to find uh, all the possible uh, entries uh, with multiple words, like with this query. So let's try this. Yeah. So then you will see all the possible um, all the possible entries, all the or all the all the entries that contains the word run out. Thank you, Jose. The next question we have is, does the API support JSON-LD? Um, well, well, that's an interesting question. Um, so the API doesn't support, doesn't have, doesn't have a feature for, uh, for JSON-LD. Uh, however, you can, the, the response is JSON. And you can apply um, JSON LD to the to the um, to the response, uh, but the API doesn't have any feature for JSON LD. But that is that might be something that that we could explore in the future. Thank you. And someone is asking. Are you going to make the corpora available for access through the API as well? That's definitely on the roadmap. Uh, that's definitely something I think that we're this exploring. might be a question for you, Franz. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So that's definitely under investigation at the moment. Uh, it's it's not a secret that Oxford Languages has a corpora program, corpus program. We have a corpus program already um, established at the in the Oxford Languages division, and uh, uh, one of the things that we already experimented with in the past with LexiStarts, one of our endpoints, is to make sure that we can deliver corpus derived products, corpus derived data. Um, available via API. It's definitely something that we want to improve. It's definitely something that we want to expand. So uh, we'll definitely keep adding things uh, from that side of things on the API. It's also worth uh, mentioning that the product team in Oxford Languages has a dedicated product manager for uh, the Corpus program. So we will definitely work with her uh, to make sure that we can deliver 
corpora and corpus derived products um, with a variety of delivery mechanisms. Again, uh, the API is one of those, uh, and uh, and yeah, and we want to be able to deliver things in different formats and different um, delivery methods. So yeah, the short answer is yes, we will at some point. Thank you, Franz. There's another one for you. Is it free for non-commercial apps? Um, so we have a research plan, but um, it's not enough at the moment to be non-commercial. Uh, you need to be an, inst an academic institution that is doing uh, research with the data, and we normally like sign up um, an agreement that um, people can use the Oxford API data for free for a number of months or years and then get back to us with, uh, I don't know, maybe some, you know, the information for like building case studies and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's not free. I mean, I, I would encourage you to reach out anyway um, and we can definitely work something out if you need specific data or specific endpoints. Um, I'm not, of course, I'm not promise you, promising you uh, free, free data, but uh, we can definitely see if we can find, um, you know, a common ground on which to to work together um yeah but if you are an academic institution and you're doing research in um nlp or artificial intelligence or machine translations by all means get in touch with us uh we will get back to you we will let you know that if your application as a research institution has been accepted and then we will unlock you the data if uh, if that's the case thank you friends uh, Jose, two people yeah. are asking if um, these Jupyter notebooks are available online somewhere because they would like to try the code for themselves. And if they're um, not available, you, you could share them. Um, well, it's not it's not available. Uh, we could try to to find a place where yeah to to make it to make it available. Um, I don't know how. We could do that, but yeah, I can. We can definitely, um, yeah, try to find a solution and share it with you. We can always get back to people on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, someone is asking: This API seems to provide access to the Oxford English Dictionary. How can I access the Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary data? So first of all, um, thank you for the question. Good question. It doesn't really provide access to the Oxford English Dictionary. It provides access to the Oxford Dictionary of English, which are two very different products. The Oxford Dictionary of English, which is what we deliver via API, is the Dictionary of Contemporary and Modern English. The Oxford English Dictionary, however, is the historical dictionary and the OED API is a completely different product and a completely different um, API. Uh, that being said, it will be available, I think it's a prototype stage at the moment, there's another product manager working on it, but um, if you reach out to us, uh, we can definitely, I can definitely put you in touch to the relevant product manager and, and she will give you uh, more information about that product. The Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary is something that uh, is available on another division internally at the Oxford University Press. Um, um, I don't want to say that that's not gonna come on the API, on our API, because uh, there is a good chance that the, that the, o, uh, the, the Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary um, becomes available at some point on this API. They have their own delivery system, so again, if you get in touch, I'm talking directly, of course, to the person who asked this question, if you get in touch with, with us, uh, we can put you in contact with the relevant person in the English language teaching division, and then you can talk to them uh, so that you can see like the you know the delivery methods the pricing the the format the models um everything behind those particular data sets they are available just at the moment not on this api thank you franz jose i've got one for you now why yep. does the words endpoint need the word as a get parameter where whereas the words in 
for the inflections, lemma and entries endpoint are defined in the path. Um, well, thank you very much for the question. It's a very good question. So basically, um, we don't want to treat uh, we don't want to treat the word form or inflections as an ID because we don't uh, we don't we don't support that as an ID in our database. Um, so we don't want to give the impression that an inflection or an inflected form is uh, an ID, and that is why we create this query parameter. Uh, so, so yeah, so that is so it's more like a kind of query instead of an ID. And related to that question, um, we are thinking about making the lemma endpoint to support also uh, a query parameter instead of providing the, um, the, the inflected form in the path. Um, so we so in this case, just to you know, to make clear or to let's say not mislead the user thinking that the inflected form is an ID when actually it's not an ID, it's just an inflected form. The entry or the word ID is just an ID that is related to a specific entry or a specific entries in the dictionary, while the inflected form is something more general. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I hope that answered the question. So basically, we don't treat inflected forms as IDs in the um, in our database. So that is why um, we don't want the, the words endpoint to to get to have like a an, a kind of ID in the path. Thank you, Jose. Um, the next question I've got here is. Are there tutorials available for the new API? Yeah, so we have documentation, okay. we have FAQs, um, we have um, a bunch of user guides uh, on the way to our website. So um, at the moment, I think that documentation FAQ um, should be enough, but yeah, more um, user friendly user guides, especially for like non technical stakeholders, like for example, how to use the statistics page or how to in, uh, how to retrieve the um, API credentials, those are definitely coming at some point. Thank you. We are coming to the end of our session, so I'm going to ask one more question. Friends, I believe this is for you. Have you published or intend to publish a roadmap about which languages you will add next? So um, we've never published it. We also, have, we was, of course, have it. it. It's an internal document at the moment. Uh, there are some um, thoughts to that. You still need to that we still need to 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 make but and decisions that we need to take but um definitely um i can tell you that um what we are trying to do is to deliver new languages every at the moment every quarter every every three months um and we want to proceed both with underrepresented languages uh and with um like more uh, global languages. So uh, we're talking about, for example, in, in the case of Portuguese, we have bilingual, but we don't have monolingual yet, and that's definitely on the roadmap. In the case of um, German, I, I don't remember, I think it's the opposite. Uh, so we're, we're still adding more of the, you know, the, the globally spoken languages, but also many of the lower source and underrepresented languages. Um, can't really say at the moment which one is coming first, but um, it is essentially a product decision that we need to take at some point to to, to release and to uh, make a, a roadmap of languages publicly available. Um, in the meantime, if there's any uh, language that our user base want us to add, um, I would suggest that 
uh, they should simply reach out to us, uh, let us know what they need. And um, we have a team that uh, works on acquisition. We have a team that works on developing lexical data. So if there's a strong request for a language and we don't have a way to, um, to include it in one of our next release, we definitely have a way to either acquire it or develop it ourselves. So our editorial team is working uh, every day on, on, on developing new languages, new lexical data. Our acquisition team is working every day of, on partnering up with new, uh, with different like publishers from all over the world. So if there's any language that um, you people want, reach out and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much, Franz. And um, well, thank you very much, you both, for the presentations. I hope this has been useful for everyone attending. I hope you enjoyed the presentations. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you again, the panelists. And from us for now, it's a goodbye.